Welcome to a very special part of the world. Wales is a country full of atmosphere, of breathtaking scenery and great imagination. It is no wonder, through the years, that a show like Doctor Who has used the country as a location. It's the filming of Doctor Who that forms the basis of the road trip that this film is going to chart. In part a pilgrimage to two iconic Doctor Who stories, it's also an eye-opening journey around some of the most imaginative architecture and unspoilt countryside the UK has to offer. Our first location is the village of Port Merion, a unique place designed entirely by the architect Clough William Zellis, who bought the site in 1925 and built up the village we see today between 1939 and 76. The village takes its inspiration from the Italian Mediterranean, and despite being on the notoriously storm-battered Welsh coast, as anyone who's ever been on a pub crawl in Avaris within December will attest, Port Merion's position in the estuary provides it with a great deal of shelter. The architecture of Port Merion has been designed with a colourful, almost cheeky imagination, carefully constructed so as to look unplanned and spontaneous. William Zellis revelled in creating decorative, ostentatiously artificial settings, but with sound, sustainable building techniques. It is a place which is handcrafted, designed to provide as much pleasure as possible as a development. Cherish the past, adorn the present, construct the future, was the Welsh architect's motto. It was in 1976 that the production team used this as the location for the Mask of Mandragora. The grand front to Count Federico's palace, site of the iconic Part 1 cliffhanger, is, typically of Port Merion, only a façade. The Gloriette provides a balcony looking out over the village square. The main street runs between it and the buildings behind. Many parts in its construction, as with other buildings here, were recycled from other locations. The Ionic Columns were rescued from Hooton Hall in Cheshire in the 1930s. William Zellis was obviously not one to let a good column go to waste. The market through which the guards pursue the doctor was set up outside what is now a small cafe, which serves very tasty barrow beer and tea. This is near the entrance arch, seen towards the start of the Mask of Mandragora, and opposite a shop selling the prisoner memorabilia. There's also a Factory Seconds outlet for Port Merion Pottery nearby. Beyond the colour of the village, it's also worth taking a wonder around the gardens. Less formal than the greenery of the village, in the summer they are equally a riot of colour. From Port Merion, it's only a couple of miles hop up the road back along the A487 inland and off along the A4085 northwards to Plas Brondanu, the family home of Clough William Zellis. Beware, but it is easy to miss the turning onto the A4085 though, and end up halfway back to McCullough. It was in the immaculately tended gardens here that Richard Herndahl recreated the role of the first Doctor for the Five Doctors, the elderly time traveller being captured by the time scoop. The garden, but not the house, is open to the public. Entrance fee is paid by our honesty box, and please do be honest. The steps down which Herndahl wandered, whilst observed by Barusa, are still instantly recognisable. The lawn over which he is pursued is, in fact, situated at 180 degrees to the steps compared to what is suggested on screen. The distinctive topiary here survives in much the same shape as when the BBC filmed here in 1983, albeit showing its age a little. A 
Across the road from the House and Gardens is a way marked the Tower. This is a fairly uneven path and probably best only for the sure of foot, but leads to one of the most iconic locations from the same story. Following the track curving along the contours of the hill, through a foreboding and very heavy gate, you'll probably have to put your body weight against it, but don't be deterred. Then you'll see something very special, a buzz, the tower appears over the crest of the hill. This is a folly, actually called Folly Castle, built by William Zellers, and was of course used to represent the Eye of Orion in the same show. This is where the fifth doctor, Tegan and Zerlo, stop for an interrupted breather before the story gets going. The tower is open, and you can take a look inside, though obviously at your own risk, and a good head for heights is needed. It's probably easier though to take a seat where Turlo sat to sketch the view. I forgot my sketchbook on this occasion. I could work it up from a photo later. Leaving Plas Brondan, we head back inland on the A487 then south on the A496, this time taking the coastal route, past Harlech and turning off the road at Hlanbeda, when the signposts say Kuhn Baikan. Follow this road, it's about 5 miles, and you'll have to do most of it in second gear, and be prepared to buy some new wheel trims after, alongside the river, until the road opens up onto Snowdonian moorland. Doing this route in a fairly modern Toyota Yaris, I did wonder how they got an old banger like Bessie down there. The first sign you've reached another iconic location is a standing stone on the right, at the head of the lake. Don't stop here, but carry on alongside the lake until you reach the car park and campsite at the far end. It's a couple of quid to park here, but well worth it. From here you can walk back alongside the lake, first of all under the peculiar gnarled trees through which the third doctor and Sarah Jane evaded the Cybermen, abandoning Betty. Visiting in May, the trees were actually green. Every planet has a north, and it seems the death zone even has a summer. Further back, you will return to the Standing Stone. This is where Anthony Ainley, as a master, confronted Pertwee's third doctor with the Lord President's seal. No Time Lords here today though, only sheep. All in all, these three locations make an easy day's driving if you're based nearby. There's more to see around here, too, than Ant Frackon Pass, which doubled as to bet for the abominable snowmen, and the picturesque village of Hlangochen, home for many years to the Dapple Factory and Doctor Who Exhibition, now relocated to Batpool. It's not hard to see why a show like Doctor Who pushed the budget occasionally to film in this area. The imaginative architecture and epic scenery a perfect complement to the show's style. But in coming here, you'll find a lot more. It's often the case that the camera lies. Visit a lot of locations and you'll find something lacking the gloss of the camera lens. Clever editing hides many a location shortfall. There is, though, an exception in this case. It's an area at once wild and natural and thoroughly engaging for the tourist a magnet for driving enthusiasts, walkers, bikers and cyclists. Nestled between the rugged majesty of Snowdonia and the sea-worn glamour of the Welsh coastal resorts.